Welcome back. In the last video, we came to this equation uh, for hydrostatic pressure, and this is really the equation that we can use to determine the pressure at any point inside a body of liquid, an incompressible fluid. And in this video, I want to talk about a few kind of assumptions and some pretty cool things that happen when we study fluids that, or specifically liquids, that are in static equilibrium. The first thing I want to talk about is this P naught, right? So this P naught was really the pressure that was being applied at the very top of this surface, where we kind of took our D to start. So in our case, because this container was open to the atmosphere here on Earth, we could assume that this P naught value is really this 101.3 kilopascals or whatever else that unit value is or that value is in other units. But the main thing to realize here is that P naught in this case for the top of this container is just whatever pressure is being applied to the top of that liquid. So because this is open, it's just the atmosphere that is pushing down on this body of liquid. But if this liquid was closed or this container was closed, let's say there was like a piston or some kind of surface that was pushing down on this liquid from the very top. So if there was something like this, there was like some metal mass and that was connected to some sort of piston and that was pushing down on the liquid. Now suddenly that P naught that we're studying here that we assume to be just this atmospheric pressure, now it actually becomes the pressure of whatever this force is creating right on the top of this liquid. So remember, P naught is just the force that or the pressure that is being applied at the top surface of this liquid. Now the second thing I want to talk about is just the liquid itself, right? We're studying fluids and we're specifically studying pressures in fluids, but for pressures in liquids, we have to assume that this liquid is incompressible, right? Incompressible liquids or fluids, uh, that is the only case that we can use this hydrostatic pressure equation. And because this fluid is incompressible, we can safely assume that this value rho, which is our mass density, that remains constant anywhere inside of this liquid. And because this equation really just depends on these parameters and this value d, which is depth, we can use this equation to basically figure out what the pressure is at any horizontal kind of cut or line that is from the top of the liquid to where we're studying. So if we wanted to figure out what the pressure was here, it would be the same as the pressure here, or the pressure here, or the pressure here, or the pressure here, right? The pressure along this horizontal line is going to remain constant in this case, right? Because this hydrostatic pressure equation doesn't depend on volume, it doesn't depend on area, it just depends on depth. So it doesn't matter how wide this body of liquid it is that we're studying, it only depends on the depth. Now, this actually leads me to kind of another case that you might have seen in other classes. So let me actually draw this out and we'll go over it together. So I have this weird container, right? This is a 2D view, so we're looking at it from the side and it is filled with this body of liquid. We can just assume it's water, so we're studying water and we pour water inside of this container and you can see at two different points of this container, actual dimensions like this width here is obviously much wider than this width here. But remember, because our hydrostatic pressure or pressure at any depth below the level surface of the liquid does not depend on area, then this doesn't matter. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the pressure along any horizontal line in this weird container that has kind of two openings is going to be the same regardless of this width of each part of the container. And because this liquid that we're studying is an incompressible fluid that is in hydrostatic equilibrium, 
and it's open to the atmosphere on all parts of the container at the top, then the surface level of this liquid will always come to the same height. So you're never gonna see two open containers here that are connected like this where on one side the liquid is way up here and over here the liquid surface might be down here, right? Those would be at two different levels. That is not possible unless there's some type of external force being applied to cause that scenario. But for fluids or liquids is, that are in hydrostatic equilibrium, the surface level of that fluid um, are, are going to be the same height and if the container on both sides is open to the atmosphere. So remember, the pressure at any depth in this body of liquid is really just dependent on the mass density, like what the liquid or fluid actually is, the depth from the surface at the top to whatever point that we're studying in. So, you know, if we were looking for pressure at this line, then that depth would be this right here and then of course the gravitational constant and any pressure that is initially being applied at the surfaces here and here. Let's take this same container and let's actually close off uh, one of the open surfaces. So I'll redraw that really quickly. Now in this case, we what I did here was I actually capped off the open uh, end of this container here on the right side. So there's still fluid here, right? This is the same mass or body of water that we were studying, but now the liquid is being stopped here. And you can see that it's being stopped some distance from this top of the surface line. So again, because our liquid is incompressible, the density, mass density is constant. The body of water is in hydrostatic equilibrium. The pressure along any horizontal line is still going to be the same. So the pressure here is still going to be the same as the pressure here. But now these two heights or the surface of both of these liquids are going to be different because we're stopping the liquid here. So naturally this liquid we can fill more and more until it reaches the very top of this container and overflows. But the main concept here is because we've capped this off and we've filled the body of water more than the height of this capped container, then we know the top of this cap is going to be applying some kind of downward force to this liquid that's you know, applying some kind of a force of its own due to the pressure here at this certain cap. Now, this concept is going to be important in some of the future problems that we do. So just keep that in mind. I know this is a little bit abstract, but hopefully when we get into some examples, this will make a lot more sense. All right, well, see you then.